Hi guys, welcome back to Medico Pharma lecture one second. Today we are going to continue fourth lecture on route of drug administration, where we will continue with parenterals. Kindly see our previous lecture on same topic for your better understanding. Suppose there is a drug which has to be administered either in the form of a small volume injections or large volume infusions. This can be done by the help of needles or by inserting catheter into the body for drug administration. Hence, this type of route of drug administration where needles or catheters are used to deliver a drug are collectively called as parenterals. Now, we will define parenterals as the drugs which are given by injection or infusion by means of needle or catheter inserted into body are collectively called as parenterals. Understood? Okay. Now we will see some examples of parenterals. So examples are gentamicin injection then cisplatin then lorazepam there are many other examples uh, which we are going to see in individual class of parenterals okay now we will discuss about advantages of parenteral root okay so it has fast drug absorption pattern it can be given to unconscious patient and also in emergency cases okay dose accuracy is maintained it means whatever dose we want to give we can deliver it okay there is no first pass metabolism as the drug is administered directly to the systemic circulation it has quick onset of action it means it will start working as soon as it is delivered to blood circulation now we will discuss about disadvantages of parenteral roots so the first one is acidity has to be maintained all the time because the drug is administered directly to the blood circulation they are relatively costly they are also painful expert is needed for drug administration so you need some expert for this activity then there will be chances of inflammation at the site of drug administration okay then tonicity has to be maintained if the drugs are given in large doses volume and there is less patient compliance okay so now we will discuss about types of parenterals now the first one is intravenous IV second one is intramuscular IM third one is subcutaneous SC fourth one is intradermal fifth one is intra arterial sixth is intraperitoneal IP intra articular intra cardiac intra thecal or intra spinal intramedullary epidural or peridural injection or infusion intracerebral injection intracerebro ventricular injection extra amniotic 
एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन इंट्रा कैभर्नस इंजेक्शन और रूट इंट्रा विट्रल इंजेक्शन इंट्रा साइनोवियल रूट और इंजेक्शन एंड इंट्रा एक्सटर्नल रूट और इंजेक्शन ओके नाउ वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट टॉनिसिटी व्हिच इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इन केस ऑफ लार्ज वॉल्यूम पैरेंट्रल्स सो सपोज दिस इज अ नॉर्मल सेल विथ सेलेक्टिव परमिएबल मेम्ब्रेन व्हाट डज इट मीन इट मीन्स दिस मेम्ब्रेन विल सेलेक्टिवली अलाउ सर्टेन आयोन्स और इलेक्ट्रोलाइट्स to pass through the cell membrane and we also know that the cytoplasm which have certain specific concentration of salts like sodium chloride potassium sulfate etc suppose there are three different salt solution with different concentration and suppose a normal cell is placed in each of them now we will analyze what will happen to the cell in the first beaker salt concentration is low compared to that of cytoplasm in second beaker salt concentration is same as that of cytoplasm and in third beaker the salt concentration is more than that of cytoplasm okay the first solution is called hypotonic solution hypo means less tonic solution second one is called isotonic solution iso means same and third one is called hypertonic solution okay so now we will see what will happen to the cell if we will place the cell in these solutions we also know that salts attract water so in first beaker the water will move towards cytoplasm in second beaker since the concentration is same whatever water will come inside the cell same amount will go outside so there is no net change in case of third beaker the water will move from cytoplasm to the salt solution okay so in the first beaker where the water will go inside the cell cell swelling will take place okay please note that the cell membrane is selective permeable so the salt cannot come inside or go outside the cell okay so if the water will rush towards the cell the cell will keep on swelling and swelling and a time will come where cell will blast that is called cell lysis now in second situation where the whatever water is coming inside the cell same amount of water is going outside that is a equilibrium is maintained and cell remain normal okay so in third beaker where cell is continuously losing water that leads to cell shrinking now we will define tonicity tonicity is ability of a solution to cause a cell to gain or lose water and mostly depends on concentration of solute or salts on both side of the cell membrane okay so note tonicity is the way to compare two different solution okay it means tonicity can only be studied in comparison okay we cannot call one solution as hypotonic or hypertonic solution okay now there is another note there are few words which when come as a prefix they will have a specific meaning like hypo means less iso means same hyper means more okay so examples like hypertonic hypovolemic hypotension hypertension isosmotic etc now we will classify tonic solution into three categories one is hypotonic solution 
hypertonic solution and isotonic solution and we will compare and contrast these solution so the solution in which the concentration of solute is less compared to that of cell is called as hypotonic solution okay the solution in which the concentration of solute is more than the cell is called as hypertonic solution the solution in which the concentration of solute is equal to that of cell is called as isotonic solution now in hypotonic solution water move inside the cell okay here water moves outside the cell here there is no net movement of water across the cell okay now coming to hypotonic cell swell and if continued it will blast or break down okay that is called cell lysis here cell will shrink and if continued cell may die this process is called cell shrinking okay in isotonic solution nothing happens to the cell cell remains normal okay with this we came to the end of this lecture and we will continue the classification of parent roles in the next lecture okay thanks for watching us kindly subscribe our channel and please provide your feedbacks for our further improvements thank you thank you very much